What's up peeps, welcome back to Rebound and Safety. Today we're gonna to talk about the basics of asbestos, what you need to know to manage asbestos. Let's jump into the intro and we'll get right into it. Rebound and Safety. What's up peeps, welcome back to Rebound and Safety. Rebound and Safety is a YouTube channel and podcast doing exactly what it says on the tin. We're here to change the perception of the safety. We do that right here on YouTube. We do that over on the podcast as well. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and the bell and all those magical algorithm button thingamajiggies. Okay, in today's episode, we're gonna be talking about asbestos. And before we do that, I just wanna give a quick shout out to our sponsor of YouTube and podcast, Rebranding Safety, Paradigm Human Performance HSE subscription service. And I'll tell you more about them later on. So first things first, what is asbestos? Well, asbestos is actually a naturally uh, occurring mineral. Um, you can watch an amazing uh, documentary series by Vice, I'll link it in the description below, about asbestos and actually how there's a town in Russia called, I think it's asbestos or asbestos or asbest or something like that, something very similar to asbestos. And they still mine asbestos, they still manage it and actually it, it's part of their life and it's what they do. Um, so it's fascinating to see that it it's really still does exist and it, it's really, really versatile. Any of you that have worked in kind of uh, property management and manage a lot of older properties, you'll know how versatile this stuff is. It was used in breaks, in toilet seats, in shelves, in window frames, in fire doors, in absolutely everything. And all of those things are called ACMs, asbestos containing materials, things with asbestos in them. A good acronym to keep in your mind because you'll hear it a lot different from ACM in relation to cladding, which is aluminium containing materials or aluminium cladding something, but different, asbestos containing materials. And you just to note, this is still a problem. I remember not so long ago, I used to think that, well, why work in asbestos? Because it'd be gone soon, we'll have got rid of it. But the World Health Organization actually estimates that 125 million people are still exposed to asbestos in the workplace. This is still very much a problem of today's world. There are primarily three main types of asbestos which is commonly used, especially in the UK. There's, um, forgive me if I get, get these pronunciations wrong, but there's chrysotile, which is white asbestos, amosite, which is brown asbestos, and crocylidite which is blue asbestos. There are also actually three other types that are really not very common at all, and they are anthrophilite, anthrophilite, I think, actinol, actinolite, and tremolite. I may have got all of those pronunciations wrong, but basically there's several forms of asbestos, white, brown, brown and blue. And then there are other types that are not really used. Asbestos is dangerous because the fibers that are really not visible to the human eye to the point they're so small if you've got a penny and the HSC have a very very good image uh, to kind of depict this a penny it's like a pinprick on a penny you can just about see this tiny tiny dot tiny and they go up into the air get like asbestos dust so to speak and they're tiny fibers and you inhale them and they go into your lungs and essentially they they attach onto your lungs and then over the, over the period of time, your body attacks that as it's a foreign object and then that builds a, a tumor, so to speak, and that becomes a form of cancer, basically. In its simplest form, that's the risk. In 1985, the UK banned the import of white and brown asbestos. And these bans then evolved all the way up to 2005 where the EU banned all remaining uses of asbestos. So when you're looking at buildings or working at buildings, anything beyond the year 2000 won't have asbestos, but anything prior to that is likely to have something with asbestos in, unless it's been, you know, refurbed and stuff. There are three primary pieces of legislation that cover the management of asbestos. That's CDM, the Construction Design Management Regulations, the Control of Asbestos Regulations, and the Health and Safety at Work Act. All of those collectively give several people duties to manage the risk of asbestos within your operations. The duty under CAR, the Control of Asbestos Regulations, 
primarily lies with the person who's in control of the operation, who is in control of that property. And most of the time these fall for a business to non-domestic properties, they will fall ultimately on the company and then the maintenance company will manage that risk. So in a domestic property, if you're a tradesman or anything like that, basically the risk to manage it uh, falls with the person that owns the building, so the, the homeowner, so to speak. So if you were going to do a quote, you saw something you suspected was asbestos, you would say to the homeowner, I think that's asbestos, um, I would like you to get it tested. Or what most companies do is they say, we'll get it tested, that will fall into part of the quote, and or you'll absorb the cost, whichever one you decide to do. And then if it is asbestos, you'll pay to get it removed, and the gate that will be absorbed into the quote. So ultimately, responsibility falls onto the homeowner to pay for it but because you're a contractor you're a tradesman you have the contacts to get it done and you want to get it done because you don't want to put yourself at risk if you employ people and they're exposed to that risk you have a duty to them to protect them from that risk but the duty of managing the asbestos is with the homeowner if that hopefully that makes sense so basically you as an employer have a duty to protect everyone within your employment but the person who's in control of the property has a duty to manage the asbestos so that could be as simple as knowing it's there and encapsulating it which means covering it or could be painting it or put something over it so that it couldn't get out and letting you know that that's there so that you can either avoid it or you go down the route of getting a sample and then getting it removed so just to break down some of the duty holders responsibility is the duty holder should obviously be competent to carry out their duties as a duty holder so really just knowing it's there in a domestic property is probably good enough and then being able to say I think that's asbestos we were told in our survey we think it's asbestos and then do something about it if need be in a business where it's likely you could have maintenance you could have contractors working on it you probably need to have someone within your company that's a, a little bit more you can have something like an asbestos competent person course I believe it's something like that um, and these are a bit more in depth for the person that kind of managing the asbestos risk within that property if you're having quite big properties quite complex properties or a series of properties it's probably better to have something like that if it's very simple, small amount of asbestos in a small building, then probably just look at having some asbestos awareness training. You have a duty to have suitably and sufficiently assess the risk of asbestos. You have an asbestos management plan, which details the processes and procedures, how you manage that. Normally this looks like an asbestos register. So it's a list of where the asbestos is located throughout your property. And then a process, if you are to do anything with that asbestos, what you're going to do with it and how you control the the risks. So how you would form that register falls into another duty. Basically, you have a duty to survey that asbestos. Now this is commonly called a management survey, an asbestos management survey. This is different from an R&D survey and I'll explain the differences between those in a moment. It's just important to reiterate one of the final duties which I think is an important to point is that you have a duty to manage this. Straight up, you have a duty to manage asbestos. It is legally required. It's not something you can just leave there and hope never, never goes wrong. You have a duty to manage it. Identify it, let people know it's there, and then manage it, the risk when you do something with it. But this is just some of your duties, and obviously there's a hell of a lot more, and I don't want to go into all of the legal stuff, but so just some of the key points I've picked out. Okay, so the two surveys, the two surveys, a management survey, this is basically an identification process. This is somebody that would go around the property, see things that are suspected asbestos, they would survey it, they would say, yes, it's asbestos, it's this type, it's a asbestos insulating board, or it's asbestos cement, or something like that. They would survey it, they would test it, and then tell you that and form a register and give you that for you to manage. It's a management survey. That is not sufficient if you were to start smashing walls down. That is a refurb and demolition survey. So for example, if you manage a property or own a property, let's say like a sports hall, right? And a sports hall was built in 1983, right? It's pretty common there's gonna be asbestos in that building. And you probably know there is. You're gonna knock a wall down, for example, and you're like, oh, there's no asbestos in on that wall. Yeah, on that wall where you can see but there might be inside that's where you get 
an R&D survey to make sure that when they start smashing that wall down, there's not gonna be loads and loads of asbestos in the air. Refurb and demolishment survey is basically when you're gonna start refurbing or demolishing a building. A management survey is to identify what asbestos you have in the house, but it's non-intrusive. The key differences here is non-intrusive and intrusive. Okay, let's just summarize some of the people that are commonly at risk from asbestos. Construction and building trades like carpenters, joiners, plumbers, electricians, and so on. Metal trades like pipe fitters, sheet workers, sheet metal workers, sorry, metal plate workers, riveters and so on. Motor trades like mechanics, body workers and so on. Shipping and rail trades also significantly at risk normally. Things like shipyard workers, railway carriage builders and engineers as well. And this is primarily due to the variety on, and the flexibility of asbestos. It was used in everything. So it's important to remember that you're probably at risk from this. If you're building your pro your product your your machine whatever it is 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 older than the 2000 it's likely it's probably containing asbestos so before we jump into some of my top tips on how to manage this most of my top tips have come from my training in human and organizational performance and 10 years of experience in managing properties from safety but talking about human and organizational performance the sponsors of rebranded safety is paradigm human performance paradigm human performance's hse subscription service more specifically is the absolute solution for those of you that are small, medium-sized enterprises that are just juggling everything. And safety, may, maybe it's not something you don't think about, but it probably is something that you've got in the back of your head and you're thinking, we should really look into that one day or really do a bit better at that one day. And you're not really sure if you're fully compliant. This is where Paradigm's HSC subscription service comes into play. This is about looking at your regulatory and industry compliance, making sure you have that absolutely nailed. Because even if you want to start looking at this new view, hop stuff, you've got to get your compliance stuff nailed down. The base level requirement is compliance with the legislation. So if you want some help with that, but you want it from someone who is a human and organizational performance expert, so you're looking for a system that's kind of already new viewed out. It's been built through a lens of new view it's been decluttered already so it's not like you're gonna have to build this and then resort it out when you learn about new view it is a hsc subscription service with the worker dna right in the center of it it's understanding the workers expertise it's appreciating them and it's making sure that they are safe at work 100 percent paradigm human performances values, their ethos, everything absolutely aligns with Reband and Safety, otherwise we wouldn't have had them as our sponsors. So you can go check them out, there's an email address, phone number in the description below, or you can check out their website where you can sign up to their webinar, the Learning Organisation webinar as well. So if you want to go check them out completely free of charge on the webinar before you kind of work with them, then do that. So don't forget, Paradigm Human Performance HSC subscription service is a sponsor of Rebound and Safety. Let's jump back into my final tips then for managing asbestos. Taken straight out of the DOE manual for the human and organizational performance, highlight your point of no return. That's what I call it anyway. The point of no return is when there's no going back. So where would the point of no return for asbestos be? That's the point where the drill goes into the asbestos. You put that drill onto the wall, the point of no return is a push and the trigger because you're breaching the asbestos. That's it, it's, the asbestos is out, it's free. It's floating in the air. That is your point of no return. Highlight that and then you can work your way back and put in your critical control points. Now, I'm gonna do a video about this process one day because I think it's really vital. And I think it's a really good way to highlight your point of no return and then work your way backwards. It's where are our critical control points to manage it, manage the risk before we get to that point of no return. Another top tip for me would be competence. Don't underestimate the power of your people. A good level of competence when it comes to managing asbestos is really, really key to good performance, high level performance within management of safety within property management or anything around the asbestos is vital. It gives these people the flexibility, the knowledge, the cognitive space to be able to deal with the diversity and the complexity of work day to day. Because work is really complex. 
So don't underestimate the level of competency. And competency is more than just training, it's skills, it's attitude, it's experience, it's so much more. And we've done some videos on competency, so go and check them out. And finally, engage with employees. Get a real good understanding of what work looks like in reality. And really understand what they're experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis. It's so important for you not just to sit there and rest on your laurels and think you've got this managed talk to your employees, understand what work looks like in reality. Ask them. I'm thinking about asbestos recently. Do we manage that all right? How does that look for you? For you? And they go, uh, I don't really think about it. And then you just lead the conversation. You're not looking to blame anyone. You're not looking to catch anyone out. You're just looking to learn. You're looking to evolve. You're looking to improve. Employee engagement is powerful. If you want to have a tighter gap on how you perceive work and what work looks like in reality to make sure there's very little difference in those two worlds, employee engagement is a biggest and best step in my opinion to narrow in that gap okay peeps i hope you've enjoyed this video don't forget to check out paradigm human performance and their hse subscription service and their learning organization webinar i hope you've enjoyed this video i'll catch you next time safe